Good morning. I don't know if the one's in the back, but I want to make an announcement. I fell just a minute ago, and uh, I'm fine, but I will be suing the Grove. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Um, I'm so glad to be here and to be upright. Um, my name is Jeannie Flint. And I'm Elizabeth Carrilla. We want to thank you for joining us today. I'm going to give people a minute to get to their seats. But I want to thank you for joining us today at the 34th annual National Philanthropy Day. I was just a baby when it was formed. Um, Elizabeth and I are honored to be the co-chairs this year for this event. And uh, we are here representing the um, Association of Fundraising Professionals of Orange County. There are nearly 6,000 nonprofit organizations in Orange County. That is why AFP is so important. Our chapter is comprised of professional fundraisers, executive directors, consultants, volunteers, and service providers with, an admission, with, a, with a mission to advance ethical fundraising and philanthropy for the greater good through education, training, advocacy, and recognition. Uh, National Philanthropy Day is an annual event that's celebrated worldwide. It is a celebration that's dedicated to those people that have the outstanding honorees and nominee ribbons today. It's really the people that help the nonprofits survive and thrive in this county we couldn't do what we do without the time, talent, uh, treasure, the networking, and, um, and the voice that you provide to nonprofits in Orange County. Um, this is a day to celebrate those individuals that make our work possible. We would not actually have the robust philanthropic community in Orange County without each and every one of you. And I sincerely thank you on behalf of those nonprofits that depend on you. At this time, we want to take a moment to thank our sponsors. Their names are listed in the program booklet and on our screens. Special recognition goes to the presenting sponsor, the Orange County Business Journal. <laughs> Our broadcast media sponsor is PBS SoCal KCET. And sponsor, uh, the Orange County Register. So the Orange County Register has been sponsoring the National Philanthropy Days for nearly 30 years. Please join me in congratulating them. Um, at this time, Elizabeth and I want to um, acknowledge a very spe a special group of people who not only help make us look good, but make AFP look particularly good today, and that was our planning committee. There were 21 people who met since last December. Those of you who put events on, you know it doesn't happen overnight. Um, it is uh, a, a group of people committed to a common uh, cause. They worked day and night to make sure today's event was not only special and memorable, but well produced. Um, I, I just couldn't do the work without them, and Elizabeth and I both appreciate their efforts um, so much. So I would like to ask them to stand and for you to give them our gratitude. We would, we would now like to recognize the individuals and organizations that have been past honorees for National Philanthropy Day. For over 34 years, you have inspired us and have been true champions of philanthropy in our community. Our honorees are named in the program and on our screens and also in our own philanthropic halls of fame. Our outstanding honorees each year represent the true spirit of philanthropy and volunteerism. 
They've helped form the bedrock that many of our nonprofits continue to grow and thrive in recognition of their contributions to our community, may I please have all outstanding honorees who are present, please stand, and we'd like to recognize you. a little moment here so just a minute a little moment of quiet time while I gather my thoughts because my hands really hurt okay um, at this point in time we want to um, recognize the individuals and businesses that were nominated um, as honorees Elizabeth and I had the privilege of attending the final meeting of um, the judging committee where they had to make the very difficult decision of who would get the Outstanding Honoree Award this year. It was a daunting task. Over 100 nominations were submitted from nonprofits throughout the county. And I want to thank you for doing that because these are the people that aren't always in the front getting the recognition they need, and this is their day. So I encourage you to nominate again next year and continue nominating so that the people who are your silent heroes do get the um, recognition that they deserve. So what I would like you to do is um, those people that have the honoree badges or if we missed your honoree badge, if you would stand, if you were nominated this year, we want to recognize the fact that you were nominated and that those nonprofits we're um, wanting you to get the recognition you deserve. Please stand and let us honor you. And now Jeannie will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. While you're standing, I just want to mention, we were supposed to have the Anaheim Fire um, Honor Guard, um, but unfortunately they call, got called out on an emergency, so they can't be with us, so pretend I'm a big old fireman standing up here. <laughs> mm, I like that talk. Okay, um, I haven't led the ple Pledge of Allegiance since I was like in kindergarten, so you guys speak up loud because I might mess the words up. All together. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We've added a little something this year because of Mr. and Mrs. Zhang last year, if you were here, they sang God Bless America and it was the most touching thing. I think, it, I think it kept me going for about six months. It was so touching and enthusiastic. Um, and so we've decided that we would bring a little music into your lives today too. Uh, we were fortunate on our committee um, to have someone with a tremendous talent, and it wasn't me. Um, she was humming one day, and I said, I think this woman could sing. Her name is Brianna Watson, and she is in development with the Pacific Chorale, and I think you're going to be very um, impressed with our national anthem. So I would ask that you stand again, Brianna. Say, can you see? 
broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red the bombs bursting in air it broke through the night that our flag was still there oh sing does that star spangled So is that awesome? <laughs> she is totally coming back next year. Join, well, you've already congratulated her. And now to offer the invocation is Rabbi Peter Levy, the executive director of the Anti-Defamation League. I wish I could sing. It's an honor to be here. Uh, with AFP offering some opening words for this event. It's really important to honor philanthropists because philanthropy isn't simply about giving money. It's about the vision that you also bring to our organizations. And for those of us who run nonprofit organizations here in Orange County or anywhere, the work that we do, and at me and ADL, we fight hate through education, investigation, and advocacy. Uh, but we can't fight hate without the support of hundreds of folks like yourselves. So the deep praise and appreciation is for all of you. And I was thinking about the first place in the Bible where we learn about philanthropy. Uh, and it's in Exodus, when God tells Moses to tell the Israelites to ask for donations, contributions for building the tabernacle in the wilderness. And for those who are uh, in the original Hebrew 3,000 years ago, it said, Vaikuli Truma, which is often translated, bring for me these donations, these contributions for the tabernacle. But the Hebrew, it's a bad translation. It doesn't say, bring me. It actually says, take for me these donations, which has to be just a mistake, because you don't take a donation. You give a donation. You give a contribution. So what is the... Bible trying to teach us by using the word take. And I never really understood this until I heard a story about the Rothschilds. Now the Rothschilds are one of the wealthiest families coming out of Europe in the 18th century. They were bankers to kings and to governments. Uh, and at one point one of the Rothschilds was being interviewed by a journalist who asked, how wealthy are you? And this individual took out a ledger of all their charitable contributions and said to the journalist, everything that we have in the bank, the government can take away tomorrow. But this, all my contributions, this is mine forever. We all have a piece of eternity with what we give away because that can be never taken away from us. And that's what makes a philanthropist? Someone who knows that they own a piece of eternity with what they give away. That is what this is all about. So it's my honor to be with you and all of you supporting all the work that many of us do. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Rabbi Levy. Uh, thank you for that. Um, it's my honor at this time to introduce our Mistress of Ceremonies, Maria Hall Brown, 
Uh, she has been with PBS SoCal since July 1997. She is the executive producer for arts and culture programming and currently produces LA Art. Uh, Maria has won two Los Angeles area Emmys and six Golden, Glo um, Golden Mike Awards. A longtime resident of Orange County, Maria is the recipient of a Distinguished Alumni Award from UCI. But best of all, I like to think of Maria as being our favorite mistress of ceremonies. And I started to bring her a little tiara today, but then I would have wanted one too. So let us welcome uh, Maria Hall Brown. Please welcome Maria. <laughs> Jeannie, I would have worn it. I know. I know. Where is it? All right. Hello. And thank you. I am so proud and honored to be here today for this wonderful 34th annual, annual National Philanthropy Day luncheon. You know, I've said it before, but it bears repeating. I so love this day because everyone in this room has a part in taking away fear and proving the power of love. So thank you for allowing me to be with you today. And now it's really my honor to introduce the hard work of those who have led the judging committee. Believe me, that's a tough one, led by co-lead judges John Christensen and Richard Ward. John and Richard led a, pet of, a panel of judges who had the difficult job of selecting outstanding honorees from over 100 nominations submitted. And that's a real tribute to the good work being done here in Orange County. They received submissions and made their selections in June choosing the outstanding honorees that represent the very best in philanthropy in Orange County for the year. We thank each of the judges for their time and commitment, and you can see their names, they're listed in your uh, program. But at this moment, would all the judges put down their forks and stand up so that we can recognize you. Thank you. Our 2019 honorary chairs are a family that leads by example and exemplifies the very best of philanthropy in the nonprofit world, as well as the for-profit world. The Uberoth Family Foundation was the winner of the 2018 Legacy Award, and we welcome Ginny Uberoth and Vicki Booth. We'll have the pleasure of hearing from Vicki later in the program. So, yay! And now I'm delighted to introduce to you the president of the Orange County Chapter of the Association of Fundraising Professionals, Christine Peters, and our president-elect, Catherine Spear. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Great to see you all out there. What a wonderful celebration. This is always Catherine and I joined Ginny Uberoth and Vicki Booth and welcoming you to this wonderful event. It's always one of our favorites of the year. Just great to have us all together. So this is a great time to honor and celebrate the powerful impact of philanthropy in each of our lives and within our Orange County community. Within our Orange County chapter of AFP, it is our great honor each year to produce this celebration. On behalf of our nearly 300 members of our county's leading nonprofit Fundraising Executives, National Philanthropy Day represents a day to join together with 830 of our closest friends in business and community to collectively reflect and celebrate how philanthropy drives our daily efforts to improve the quality of life where we live and work. AFP, or the Association of Fundraising Professionals, is the largest association of professional fundraisers in the world with over 30,000 members in more than 230 chapters around the world. AFP's members collectively raise more than $100 billion every year, powering organizations and missions dedicated to remarkable charitable endeavors. We are part of the mission to change the world. Your support of today's celebration will help us to advance the work of AFP Orange County, providing training, education and advocacy to fundraising professionals, from career professionals through the next generation, strengthening the teams that work to make a difference in our communities. 
On behalf of our members, it is a great privilege to recognize the outstanding contributions made by all of our honorees today. The selfless efforts of these individuals, organizations, and businesses have advanced the wonderful work of compassion, community, and philanthropy in Orange County. It is we who are honored to have these angels among us. And now our first award. <laughs> Today more than ever, it is crucial that we encourage young people to appreciate, learn, and practice philanthropy as an essential joy of being an engaged adult. The Outstanding Youth Award honors youth leaders under the age of 21 who have demonstrated extraordinary commitment to, to the community through direct, direct financial support, development of charitable programs, volunteering, and or leadership. I'm certain you'll agree the recipient of this year's Outstanding Youth Award is a tremendous example of these principles. Please turn your attention to the screens. a youth for a volunteer recognition, I immediately thought of Hannah. She's just an amazing young woman who is interested in giving back to her community and she wanted to find a way to share some of her skills with the kids who live here and so she had the idea to do a sewing class and that was her first project to tackle here at Thomas House. The kids who participated in the sewing machine classes really looked forward to Hannah's classes. They were always excited to attend the class. The initial idea was to create headbands, and the reasoning behind that was that she wanted to have them do a project that would be something that she could use to sell, to then raise funds so that the children here at Thomas House could go on a field trip. And she took the kids to Discovery Cube in Orange County, so the kids were able to experience a fun field trip at the end of the series. What I was most impressed about with Hannah was that not only did she take the time to arrange the sewing class, but after the sewing class, Hannah took the time to recognize a couple of the specific kids who had a talent for making these headbands and expressed that they really loved sewing. A couple of weeks after the sewing class, Hannah showed up at the shelter with two brand new sewing machines to give to two of the kids that live at the shelter. Seeing the excitement on the kids' faces when they found out they were getting a sewing machine of their own, and then also seeing the expression on Hannah's face. Just genuine appreciation for the talents that these kids had and recognizing that in them and setting them up for success in the future so that even when she's gone, these kids have these sewing machines and they're continuing their passion. Hannah completed her sewing machine classes and she's still involved in Thomas House. She's currently working on doing guitar classes for the Thomas House youth, so she's still actively involved. Hannah is just such an impressive young woman. I know she's interested in pursuing college education. She has a lot of dreams and goals, and uh, I think the experiences that she's exposed herself to, not only at Thomas House, but in the community in general, are really going to give her the experience that she needs to go far. Hannah, on behalf of Thomas House, we are very proud of you, and congratulations on receiving this award. On behalf of Thomas House, Hannah, we just wanted to say congratulations for being chosen for this award. Hannah, on behalf of all of the lives that you've impacted at Thomas House, uh, I want to say our sincere congratulations for this accomplishment and congratulations to you on this award. Please help me in welcoming to our stage our outstanding youth honoree, Hannah Novakovic. Good morning. I am so honored to accept this award and to be a part of this spectacular event. The definition of philanthropy is the desire to promote the welfare of others. This desire is not unique to only certain people, but it is inherent in each person from birth. This desire is God-given, but it can be strengthened over time through acts of self-service and sacrifice. My motivation to serve others comes from an understanding that humans are created in the image of God and therefore possess inherent value and dignity. Humility reminds me that all people are created deserving love. 
This love can be shown through acts of service or the giving of time or money. I am honored to have had the opportunity to serve the kids at Thomas House, and I myself have been abundantly blessed in learning from them. I was especially inspired by three brothers who are around elementary school age that came to my sewing classes in order to learn how to sew so that they could pass on the skills that they learned to their mom. This act of selflessness caused me to reflect on my own life and to examine in which areas I am looking inward when I should be looking outward in order to recognize how I can be a servant to others. In the midst of the challenging circumstances that these kids face, I see a persistent desire in each one of them to learn and hearts that are constantly filled with gratitude. Today, I am filled with gratitude to see this room of people who have invested their time and money to serve humanity. Thank you to Natalie Julian at Thomas House Family Shelter and to the Association of Fundraising Professionals for hosting this event. As part of the National Philanthropy Day, our AFPOC members have a tradition of giving $2,500 of their personal contributions through the AFP Foundation to a charity of our, our Outstanding Youth's Choice. Aunt Hannah, our Outstanding Youth, has chosen her favorite charity to receive the award. It's my honor to present a check in the amount of $2,500, you can give that to Catherine, <laughs> to Thomas House Family Shelter. Yeah. But wait, there's more. <laughs> it is also our pleasure to present Hannah with a check for $1,000 from the AFP Orange County Scholarship Fund for her continuing development and education. All right, I want everybody to think about it. What were you doing when you were 17? Yes, that beautiful young woman you saw that's made such a difference is only 17. Now I'm delighted to welcome Annette Walker, president of the City of Hope, to present the Outstanding Philanthropic Group Award. Oh, we match. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. Well, congratulations, Hannah, and buckle your seat belts, ladies and gentlemen, because I think what I love most about this event today is that's just the beginning of the inspiration that you're going to see and you're going to feel. It inspires us to be our most generous and our best self. So it's my pleasure to talk to you a little bit today about the Ant's Outstanding Philanthropic Group Award. This award recognizes a group that has demonstrated extraordinary commitment to the community through direct involvement, financial support, and leadership. Please take a look at the screens. I think people come to the Junior League for a variety of experiences. Sometimes they are new to the community and they want to meet like-minded women. Maybe they want to learn more about how a nonprofit organization runs. And then certainly many join the Junior League to make a difference and make an impact in the community. When the community has a need, we're the women that they turn to for help, to come up with creative solutions and ideas to combat or target whatever it is that the county is facing. One way that the Junior League of Orange County has been impacting our region recently is bringing awareness to the cause of human trafficking. So we've partnered with various organizations such as the Orange County Human Trafficking Task Force, the DA's office, the Be The One campaign. We've had a large seat at the table with the Human Trafficking Roundtable. We hosted our first ever Little Black Dress Initiative last year, which brought awareness to human trafficking through social media. And because of our efforts, it's become part of a dialogue. We were one of the first organizations to start this conversation on something that's very important for everybody to be aware of. So the skills and tools that we learn here in the Junior League of Orange County enable us to become more effective leaders within our community. Our own league here in Orange County has done a tremendous amount of work 
throughout its existence in starting other nonprofits and making a huge footprint into this community. We have many members who sit on other boards of directors on nonprofit boards in the community, as well as uh, members who have other leadership positions. I currently sit on other boards of nonprofit organizations, and so much of what I've learned here at the Junior League, I take to those organizations. So really the goal is for women to get the training, the empowerment, the skills, the development, so that then they can go out into their respective communities and bring about positive change. So I would like to congratulate all of the members of the Junior League of Orange County, all of our past presidents, all of our sustaining members, our active members, our provisional members, for truly earning this award on behalf of the Junior League of Orange County. Thank you to the decades-long service of all of the members of the Junior League of Orange County. We are so proud to have the membership that is so involved and so dedicated towards bettering Orange County. We would not exist today without all the amazing and heartfelt work of our volunteers. So thank you so very much for all that you do. It's my pleasure to welcome to the stage this group of dynamic and inspiring women, Christina Markle, Sabrina Begg, Amy Oliver, and their president, Jennifer Jackson, to accept the award for Outstanding Philanthropic Award on behalf of the Junior League of Orange County. It is an honor and a privilege to stand before you today. Congratulations to all the fellow awardees. Thank you to Christina for nominating us and to the Association of Fundraising Professionals, the Orange County Chapter, for putting together this beautiful day to celebrate all of our accomplishments. The Junior League of Orange County is over 60 years old. We have a rich history with our very first community service project, Founding 1OC. We are an entirely women, yay! <laughs> We are an entirely woman, volunteer-run nonprofit who believes in developing the potential of women, promoting volunteerism, and improving our community through our trained volunteers. And we're very proud of our partnerships, such as with Orangewood Foundation, with the Orange County Human Trafficking Task Force, where we have worked to help elevate the dialogue and educate our community on how to combat this injustice. We've underscored all these efforts with amazing public affairs and advocacy work where we're thrilled to announce um, we have supported um, eight bills that will be chaptered or will be come into law. So we're super excited about that. And at the heart of our mission, we are an organization that develops the potential of women. Our members become trained volunteers. They become the women, as you heard, who sit on the boards of other nonprofits and then become business leaders in our community. We help support them in their leadership journey and we help nurture and help them fulfill their potential. And next year we're super excited because we are going to host our first ever Women's Summit where we will bring women in the community together to learn, collaborate, and to get inspired. And with all these activities of developing the potential of women and improving the community, we strive to improve lives. We strive to change the way people think. And we are really passionate about what we do. And in the end, we bring heart, and that can change the world. So I want to thank you to all of our members for their service, and thank you to all of you for this remarkable recognition. And who doesn't love the Junior League Christmas Company over at the fairgrounds? Yay. Well, at this moment in time, as a producer, I'm going to crawl an audible. What I'm going to do is I'm actually not going to give the award to our uh, presenter until after the speech. That's why we can have a nice photo here after the speech, so there's not that thought about where do we go now. So 
That's me being a producer at the risk of making the entire AFP group very angry with me. <laughs> now I would like to introduce Todd Harmonson, Senior Editor of the Orange County Register to present the Outstanding Small Business or Corporation Award. Todd, hello. The Outstanding Small Business or Corporation Award recognizes a business with fewer than 50 people um, that has demonstrated a consistent commitment to philanthropy through its involvement in one or more nonprofit organizations in Orange County. Outstanding businesses make a difference, not only by providing financial support, but also by being leaders in the community and by driving innovation that helps the quality of life for everyone living in Orange County. Please watch our screens for a video tribute. The team, at Ocrim the team at Ocrim Advisors are more than a friend and a corporate sponsor. They are a true philanthropic partner that has helped us to elevate the way dying patients live in our community. It's amazing because when you sort of consider this significant charitable footprint that Ocrim makes in the community, you might envision a company being a hundred or more employees and in reality Aprium has fewer than 20. It's a real testament to the fact that even a small organization can make a big impact when it comes to philanthropy and charitable giving. Their entire staff volunteers at all of our events, whether it be our golf tournament, our wine story, they show up with smiles on their faces ready to do whatever is asked of them. If you visit Aprium's website you'll see a section called Aprium Cares that really depicts the authenticity and the sincerity of the organization and all of its philanthropic endeavors, including the way that employees are engaged at all levels. They are also instrumental in helping us with the launch of our Heavenly Home Project. And that is a project to open the first end-of-life care home in Orange County. Thanks to the Aprium team, as well as many others in our community, we were able to purchase a house in the city of Mission Viejo in April with plans to open the home in 2021. Aprium Advisors is certainly well known uh, for its ongoing support of the Southern California Hospice Foundation. What some may not realize is just how many nonprofits the organization supports, including the Jesse Reese Foundation and Big Brothers Big Sisters of Orange County. The amazing work performed by Aprium across the charitable landscape starts at the top. It starts with Harmon and it starts with Rhonda, but it doesn't stop there. It trickles down to all employees and in fact even extends to the many clients that are partnered with Abram, and what that creates is this incredibly impactful ecosystem of charitable giving and philanthropy. Rhonda Dakoti has been actually instrumental in spreading awareness about the work that we're doing in the community. Someone that just understands the importance of end-of-life care and understands what it means to have a loved one on hospice and understands how our foundation is really helping to fill the gaps. She's been great in helping us to identify resources to help pay for things like food, electricity, final wishes, and other things that Medicare doesn't cover. Rhonda and Harmon and everyone at Aprium Advisors, on behalf of HKA, congratulations on such a well-deserved honor. Congratulations to everyone at Aprium Advisors. This is a true privilege and honor, and I am so proud to be affiliated with your organization. Welcome to the stage, Rhonda Ducote, to accept the Outstanding Small Business Award on behalf of Aprium Advisors. Wow, first, Harmon and I would like to thank AFP for this incredible honor. We also cannot accept this award without acknowledging our incredible team at Aprium that we get to work with every day. This is truly a team effort, so thank you to my team. We also want to thank Kevin Twier and Hillary Kane at HKA Marketing for setting the foundation to be here today. It is so humbling to share a room of so many like-minded people and companies who care and not only care, but move that care to action by doing something to make our community stronger by improving the lives of others. At Aprium, business is not just business, it's personal. It's about relationships and the people we meet along the way. Our guiding principle is to make a difference. I think many of you in this room believe the same thing, and that's why you're here today, too. We, we have also learned that collectively we can accomplish 
more together than we can individually. So we love partnering with others with shared values and purposes. I would also like to recognize a few of our friends who are here with us today. They are our true heroes in our community. It's because of them that we received this award, and it's because of them we even get to participate in making our community better. First, Michelle Wolfesteg from the Southern California Hospice Foundation. Michelle is passionate and has dedicated her life to helping those who are at the end of their life pass on with dignity. She has worked relentlessly to open the first nonprofit hospice house in Orange County, the Heavenly Home Project. She reminds me every day, and I quote her, as long as you are still here, you have a purpose. Next, Eric and Stacy Reese of the Jesse Reese Foundation, known for NIGU, never ever give up. This was their daughter Jessie's mantra as she battled cancer. Jessie lives on today through her joy jars and countless acts of encouragement for the thousands of children and families battling cancer. Last, Jerry Rosen of Working Wardrobes. Jerry has helped countless men, women, homeless, and veterans rebuild their lives. These are just some of our heroes in our community. This award is for you. Thank you for answering your calling. I know each of, each of you didn't ask for it nor seek it out, but that is what we love a, a, about you. It's a privilege and an honor to partner with you. You are all making a difference. Finally, I want to encourage other companies that, corp, uh, that corporate social responsibility is fun, it's addictive, and the return on investment is beyond measure. Thank you all so very much. How sweet is that? Receive an award and then acknowledge other people who are doing great work. That's incredible. Congratulations. The Outstanding Volunteer Fundraiser Award honors a volunteer who has demonstrated exceptional leadership in coordinating and motivating others to accomplish a philanthropic project for the benefit of a charitable institution. And one who has devoted a substantial amount of personal time, energy, and creativity to one or more organizations, and one who truly exemplifies the spirit of volunteerism at its very best. Those are pretty lofty goals. More than half a million volunteer fundraisers assist nonprofits in Orange County every single year. Let's take a look at a very special one. Dr. Matros is the perfect person to nominate for Outstanding Volunteer Fundraiser. She just gives her heart and soul into projects that she's passionate about. Everything that can help our youth to be in a better place, she will do anything possible. I'm absolutely in awe of how much time she spends working on behalf of Chalk and our patients and their needs. Adrian is like a person that is quiet but carries a big stick. She just keeps tapping you on the shoulder, saying, no, really, I need you, I need your help. When we started our mental health initiative, Adrian was all in. Not only did she ask what she could do, she actually came up with lots of ideas of things she could do and brought a lot of things to the table we hadn't even thought about. She felt that it was such a necessary thing to form a committee of philanthropists, of educators, of doctors to develop systems and programs and reaching out to our community because the need has been so great. She is a mover and a driver behind the mental health programs that we've been able to build. Edwin has this special talent to bring people together and to create this network that we are all working for the same goal. She believes in giving back, whether it is putting her own money on the table, whether it's a matter of reaching out to her friends and her community to say, let's gather together, let's all get behind this so that we can raise money for different at-risk children's charities. She gives us 
incredible confidence in what we're doing. She provides constant, quiet, and steady support for our programs and services. And she just does it in such a way that you feel so important about what you're doing because she helps you understand how the work is important. She's one of these volunteers that no matter what we're looking at or how we're trying to advance the organization, we can just count on Adrian to be there for us. I just wish we have more Dr. Matros in this world so we will have a better world. Adrian, on behalf of Chalk, I want to just thank you so much for everything you've done to move our mental health program along. We would not be where we're at without you. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Adrian, on behalf of Tillis Life Center, I want to congratulate you for this amazing award. You deserve every bit of it and more. And we love you so much and we appreciate all you do for us. Adrian, on behalf of Dick and myself and the Marconi Automotive Museum and Foundation for Kids, there's nobody who deserves this award as much as you do. I'm proud of you. I love you. Congratulations, my friend. On behalf of the entire Chalk Children's Health System, especially the young patients and families we're privileged to serve, congratulations, Adrian, on winning this year's Outstanding Volunteer Fundraiser Award. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Dr. Adrian Matros. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for this honor. It's an honor to be here. Being able to volunteer is a true gift. And I'm blessed to be here to accept this honor. I'm here because of you. I've had the best mentors and the best role models. Most of them are in this room. From my parents who instilled in me at a young age to always give back, and to my husband Rick, and to our children who have been so supportive of the time I spend volunteering. Thank you to Chalk for this nomination and all of the wonderful organizations in Orange County where I am privileged to volunteer. These organizations include Chalk, the Mirage JCC, Tilly's Life Center, Extraordinary Lives Foundation, Girls Inc., Orangewood, and Samueli Academy. I want to share one of my favorite quotes about volunteering. Alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. And thank you for AFP, to AFP for hosting this wonderful event. Thank you. All right, now it is my good fortune to introduce someone who I see almost every single day. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Andrew Russell, President and CEO of PBS SoCal KCET, our broadcast media sponsor of today's event. He will present the award for Outstanding Mid-Sized Business. Good. Well, thank you, of course. Uh, corporate and business philanthropy is such an important part of our community's philanthropy, large, mid-size, and small. I'm pleased to present the Outstanding Mid-Size Business or Corporate Award, which recognizes businesses with 50 to 499 employees that demonstrate an outstanding commitment to philanthropy through its financial support of one or more nonprofit organizations its leadership involvement, and the volunteer participation of its workforce, thus establishing a role model for other businesses in our community. Let's enjoy this video together. The Balboa Bay Club not only provides an amazing venue, a place for relaxation and entertainment, but it's clear that the Balboa Bay Club also has a heart for their community. They give back, they care, and they find ways to help the greater Orange County community. New Directions for Women is an addiction treatment provider that serves women of all ages. And the Balboa Bay Club has assisted us with our philanthropic efforts and our scholarship fund in particular. 
The Balboa Bay Club hosts not only our annual fundraiser, but so many other nonprofits as well here in Orange County. And because of their generosity at our annual fundraiser, we're usually able to raise about half a million dollars for the Pamela Wilder Scholarship Fund, which helps women stay in treatment for the clinically recommended length of time and gives them the best chance at a life of sustained sobriety. Members of their leadership, including Carol Pickup, Devin Martin, and Jerry Johnson, all serve as members on the board of directors for New Directions for Women. Carol Pickup, it was really her idea to create the partnership with the Orange County School of the Arts. And then Devin Martin served on our foundation board, the Pickup, and the Martin Family Foundations have donated over $300,000 to the school to support students in need. They give of their treasure in so many different ways. In-kind donations, monetary donations, letting us use their space. We're able to direct so much more funds into actually serving our women and families. What I love about the Balboa Bay Club and the, the leadership here is they're family focused, they're community focused. Together the last couple years we've collaboratively developed a holiday performance, a tree lighting show that's open to the community so that we can provide our students a professional performance experience, but at the same time join with the entire community to celebrate the holiday season. Before we ever even ask them for something, they're always coming up with a way to give back. They've been a partner with us to make sure that every student in Orange County that has a passion and a talent for the arts has access to the arts, and they've provided funding and resources to make sure that every student has a wonderful educational experience at the Orange County School of the Arts. On behalf of New Directions for Women, we want to congratulate the Balboa Bay Club and Resort for winning this prestigious award. It is well deserved and without you, we could not do what we do every single day. Thank you. On behalf of the staff and students of the Orange County School of the Arts, I want to thank and congratulate the Balboa Bay Club, the Pickup family, the Martin family, for your vision, for your passion, for your commitment to the community, and for your commitment to the Orange County School of the Arts. So on behalf of the women, children, and families that we serve, thank you so much for everything you do. You completely go above and beyond to help us fulfill our mission, and you're doing so much to help others. Please welcome to the stage, the owners of the Balboa Bay Resort and Balboa Bay Club, Balboa Bay Club, uh, to accept the outstanding mid-sized business and corporate and corporate award. Uh, Carol Pickup and Devin Martin. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, for those kind words. I mean, how can we even talk after that video? I've got tears in my eyes. I can't see what I'm doing here anyway. But, uh, but in looking around this room, and I've got a lot of years on me, and in a couple weeks I'm going to be adding another one, but I just wanted to say I have never seen so many movers and shakers in one room in all my life. So congratulations to all of you. Uh, now, uh, I wanted to say that um, the Balboa Bay Club and Resort, uh, this award goes to so many, many people, just not those of us who are accepting this today. And um, we uh, have our Board of Governors, our officers, our staff, and so many. And today, uh, at our table, besides my family being here, uh, we have two very special uh, staff members. And one is Letitia Rice, who is our general manager. And why don't you raise your hand, Letitia? Okay. And then there's also Aaron Trent. Now, his title. His title in our book, our Bay Window book that, that uh, Bruce Cook edit, is at the editor, is that he is the director of members and their club members and their goings on in events. But you know, I'm adding a new title to him today. He is the director of happiness, laughter, and fun. So thank you, Aaron. <laughs> so
see, I told you. It's, he's embarrassing. <laughs> but that's what makes life so fun for all of us at the Bay Club or people like this. Let me see, I think I had one more thing to say. No, I am now, and I'm going to now introduce my beautiful daughter, Devin. Sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to read a little bit. I'm not like my mother who can just go off the cuff. Uh, we are just so incredibly uh, thankful. Thank you so much for this honor. We as a family are um, honored to be in this position, to be able to spark so many amazing organizations. My husband Kevin, my brother Todd, and sister-in-law Natalie, my mom and dad, have been so very blessed to be able to have commitments to New Directions for Women, Orange County School of the Arts, OC Big Brothers Big Sisters, and the newest one is the Pickup Family Neurosciences Institute at Hogue Hospital. Mother Teresa once said, it's not how much we give, but how much love we put into giving. And that's how we feel. Our hope is that we can build a legacy at the Balboa Bay Club and Resort that is based in our love for God and our community. Thank you again for this award. Did everyone see Carol's shoes? Are they not the best you have ever seen? She's going to give them to me after today is over. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is my good fortune to welcome to the stage Laura Garrett, Vice President, Associate Publisher, and Events Chair of the Orange County Business Journal to present our outstanding Large Business or Corporation Award. Welcome, Laura. Thank you, Maria. What an amazing, amazing group this is, um, amazing stories. We're so proud to be part of this event. It's an honor, it's a privilege to be back here as the National Philanthropy Day presenting sponsor. Thank you to Doug Freeman for bringing this day to life and to AFP for organizing this fabulous event. Finally, thank you for your support of the Business Journal. We're celebrating our 30th year of weekly publishing and we're so proud to be part of this incredible, giving, caring, warm community. I now have the honor of introducing the Outstanding Large Corporation Award. This award recognizes a business with more than 500 employees that has created a culture of philanthropy within its organization. The honoree demonstrates an outstanding commitment to philanthropy through its financial support of one or more nonprofit organizations and has strong leadership involvement and volunteer participation of its workforce, establishing a role for other businesses within our community. Please turn your attention to the screens. Clark Construction has been involved in many ways at Hope Builders over the years, early on in helping us build support in the community, on our board of directors, as volunteers, supporting our gala, really in every way they could be involved, they have been involved in helping this organization thrive. They have helped us grow from a very small wood shop into the training program that we are today with the goal of helping us build a pipeline of skilled, reliable employees for the construction industry. Clark Construction really supports their employees in getting involved in causes they care about in the community. They're just an excellent example of what philanthropy can be in the business world. Both individual leaders and employees in the company and then the company itself investing in good works in the community around the business they do. And our current board member and the regional president, Carlos Gonzalez, is an excellent example of that. He got involved when he was a project manager in Clark, and now as the regional president, he's involved at the board leadership level, inviting the business community he works with to get more involved. And since 1997, we've always had a representative from Clark Construction on our board. So it's been really incredible to see Clark take a leadership role in inviting their partners, but also their competitors, to get involved in financially supporting this organization. And that's because they really believe and understand that the work being done at Hope Builders to build the future workforce of Orange County is critical to their business. And by opening their network, 
Clark has really helped in one way or another every single one of those youth connect to employment, connect to the next step, get training that they need. Their leaders know what the workforce needs are locally, they know what opportunities are there, and they look for the opportunity to leverage that by providing opportunity to the next person. And they really believe in investing in their people and investing in the community. They've really made it their mission to be invested in Hope Builders, invested in the lives of our youth, and ultimately invested in our community. They're one of those quiet heroes out there in the community, not looking for applause or attention for what they do, but just doing every day the right thing because it's the right thing to do. I'm delighted that Clark Construction is receiving this award, and we're fortunate to have so many generous partners, but Clark Construction stands out among them as a true leader in, in their philanthropic efforts. Congratulations, Carlos Gonzalez and Clark Construction. Hope Builders is proud to be in partnership with you. This is well deserved. Wow, quiet heroes, I like that. To accept the Outstanding Large Corporation Award on behalf of Clark Construction, please welcome to the stage Carlos Gonzalez, President. I was sharing earlier with a group of people that uh, it is so humbling to receive this recognition. This is a very big deal. Uh, there have been a couple of comments about the movers and shakers in the room and to be in the company of some of the honorees that are being recognized today uh, is really special and humbling. Thank you very much to AFP. Thank you very much. A very, very special thank you to Hope Builders. Uh, certainly for the nomination, but more importantly for the partnership. For over 20 years we've had the opportunity to work together and really impact our communities. And the final appreciation is really for the people of Clark Construction. It is part of the company's DNA to make the communities where we have the fortune to work and live better. And every one of the people that chooses to be part of Clark, I know in large part does that because they recognize that we're not only committed to building great buildings, but we're committed to building great people, great communities. We will continue to support them to find what they're passionate about so that we can enable their ability to improve their communities. Thank you again very much to AFP, to every one of you. Thank you for the work of the volunteers and the fundraisers that give all their time and their professional expertise to improve the world that we live in. Thank you so much. This is a really good time to actually say thank you to Bill Ennis, who does these wonderful videos every year. So I want to say thank you, Bill. The Outstanding Founder Award recognizes an individual on his or her achievement, leadership, and vision in establishing a successful nonprofit organization dedicated to providing important charitable services to the community or to improving the life of individuals and families living in Orange County. Let's take a look at one of those people. Bill has tremendous passion for what he does and to give up a lucrative career in the executive chef restaurant industry was a huge switch in careers, but he believes so passionately in feeding people. He spent so many years feeding the dignitary and the wealthy as a five star five uh, diamond hotel executive chefs, but his passions for feeding the people who are in need, the food insecure. He had this calling to leave his past life behind and look towards a future of serving others. And he found a way to use his talents and to use his creativity and really more than anything to use his big heart to serve his community. There's a lot more than just feeding the community. He has a heart for the families and he sees a lot of people even though with the job having a hard time make ends meet and that trigger his heart to feel like well maybe he can use his skills to feed those in need not just the homeless but the people who are actually living on the edge that actually are the working poor. He started this nonprofit foundation from scratch 
and turned it into an amazing facility that provides large quantities of food to hungry people here in Orange County. He has vast culinary expertise. He's an excellent leader and teacher and is able to convey not only the meaning behind what he's doing, but the necessary tools that it takes to make it work to his employees and to his volunteers. He has an extreme passion for not only feeding people, but nourishing their soul. Bracken's Kitchen has been extremely helpful to Chefs to End Hunger because I know that the food that we recover is going to an excellent home to really serve the communities that are in need. He's an inspiration in something that I'm very passionate in, which is uh, food waste and hunger two big problems that have one solution, it seems to me, and he's working at it every day. Congratulations, Bill, on behalf of Bracken's Kitchen, our volunteers, our staff, everybody who come across this organization for all that you do, the love for food, the love for people, and your faithfulness. I want to thank you, and thank you for all the impact that you have made to all of us. Congratulations, Bill. The Roosters is very proud of you and very excited to be working with you and your staff and look forward to lots more meals for the families that we support. Thank you for what you do. Congratulations, Bill, for winning the Outstanding Founder. I knew you would. Bill, it has been a pleasure working with you for the last 10 plus years. I look forward to working with you for many years into the future. And on behalf of Chefs to End Hunger, congratulations, you deserve this. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Bill Bracken. Wow, a little bit overwhelming. I'm not even sure where to start. I don't know why I'm up here. I'm really not worthy when I look around the room of all the amazing people and the work they do. I'm really humbled to be here. Uh, but somewhere along the way, I realized my story actually can affect people and maybe encourage others to, to, to reach out and make a change in the world. So I thought I'd just share a little bit about that very quickly. Because it's about 10 years ago today that our economy sunk into this really deep depression and a lot of good people were losing their jobs. I watched a lot of them, really good people lose their jobs at a time when there was no jobs out there to be had. Um, I really don't know the difference between a recession and a depression, but it was a pretty depressing time if you guys think back. Uh, I watched friends struggle just to pay their rent stay in their homes and put a meal on the table. The face of hunger really changed right before my eyes. As a man of faith, I knew it was then that I was being directed uh, to do something different with my talent and skill. And like most men, we don't ask for directions and we're given, when we're given them, we usually ignore them. So I ignored mine. I chose to put my head down, work hard, and try to avoid landing on the corporate chopping block and what was going on at that time. But uh, quite frankly, I was pretty scared. Um, but in spite of all my efforts, I did end up on the corporate chopping block and I lost my job. Uh, while scary at the time, it was one of the most liberating days of my life. And I knew then it was God doing for me what I couldn't do for myself. With that clarity of mind and heart, I acted like the brave, strong, courageous man that I am and I ran the other direction. As fast as I could and as hard as I could, I got right back into the corporate world of hospitality promises and money and fame and all these things. Um, that didn't work out so well. But I did it at the time because I had a wife who didn't work. I had three kids of my own and trying to put a meal on their table was my biggest fear. Along the way of all that running, I came to realize that hunger in Orange, what hun hunger in Orange County was all about. And again, in spite of all the running, all those roads eventually led right back to what is now Bracken's Kitchen. But along the way, learning that 48% of our kids in Orange County are on the government subsidized free and reduced meal plan is unacceptable. And that number hasn't changed much in the last 10 years. Today, right now, as we're enjoying this meal, one out of two kids basically doesn't have a meal today without the government's help. I mean, think about that. In the state of California, that number jumps up to 59%. So it's those things uh, that really uh, led me to where I am today. And needless to say, I stopped running and I just surrendered and said, God, okay, tell me what you want me to do. And it's that is what's really led me here today. Um, I often say that Bracken's Kitchen has done more for me than anyone I've ever helped. And it really is true. You know, Gandhi uh, once said that the surest way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. And I am beyond blessed to be able to do the work we do. Um, 
And with that, I just would like to thank a few people. First and foremost, I thank God for calling me here today. And right, real close second, somewhere out there, my wife, Molly. Um, little did I understand the financial, emotional, and spiritual impact that making this decision would have on my life. And I wouldn't be here without you, Molly. Love you. Thank you. It hasn't been easy, and I know it's far from over. But then, beyond Molly, there's obviously our team at Bracken's Kitchen, led by Katarina, Cat, as we call her. If you haven't been to the kitchen, you should come visit her cat cave. You know, you've been a blessing along the way, leading the team and coming alongside me in this battle against both food waste and hunger. And to John, Brett, and Ann, who are here today that somehow foolishly thought I deserved this award and nominated me, thank you. Um, the guy who bought us a 9,000 square foot kitchen to work out of, thanks to him. Uh, and finally, all those of you in the committee who decided I was worthy and to everyone who made today happen. And just my parting thought uh, of the foundation of Bracken's Kitchen and the power of food because we all share the two most basic human needs for survival, the need to breathe and the need to eat. And it's that simple fact that gives food so much power in a person's life. And at Bracken's Kitchen, we feel strongly that before we can offer refuge to the poor, educate our young, offer hope, offer, offer hope to the afflicted or heal the sick, we have to be able to feed them first. I'm honored to be here because we're doing just that. Thank you. Do anything you want, go anywhere you want, at any time you want. You are now my new hero. See, I told you, you, you are inspired after what you learned today to be a better human. Much, much, much inspiration. Well, speaking of inspiration, it is now my pleasure to bring to the stage Vicki Booth and Jenny Uberoth of the Uberoth Family Foundation. They were the recipients of the 2018 Legacy Award, and they will present this year's Outstanding Philan Philanthropist Award. I can say that. Welcome, Vicki and Jenny. Good afternoon. The Outstanding Philanthropist Award recognizes an outstanding individual, family, or family foundation with a proven record of exceptional financial generosity and volunteer leadership to one or more Orange County nonprofit organizations who has demonstrated extraordinary civic and charitable responsibility and whose generosity inspires others to philanthropic action. On a personal note, um, this next recipient, Keith Swain, it's not a surprise, you already know, um, goes back so many years with my parents and our family, over 30 years of working together in the community. And on a personal note, Keith to me has been a, a friend, a partner, a mentor. We've worked together on the Orange County Community Foundation Board, um, starting the Family Foundation Alliance with a group of other funders and um, introduced us to other partners in the community that are now important partners to us. And so we are grateful and we were delighted to have the opportunity today to be here to help honor him with this great award. And at this time, I would um, ask you to join us in watching a brief video of someone who is a very special friend to many of us. Keith has had a tremendously profound impact on our organization for the last several years. I'm very fortunate as the CEO of the Boys and Girls Clubs of Central Orange Coast to have Keith as a friend, as an advocate, as an ambassador, as a mentor. He is not only a great philanthropist, but he's a thought leader in local philanthropy. I have never worked with anyone who has such an enduring passion for making a difference especially for people who don't have a voice. We study Alzheimer's disease, and Keith lost his wife, Judy, to this disease. And Keith really wanted to do something about this disease specifically by supporting researchers like those at our organization. He's also an entrepreneur like we are here as social entrepreneurs, and he understands that we have this obligation to innovate, to grow, to expand our mission. He's motivated by 
doing good things for people. And working with OC Human Relations, Keith you know, came to this just out of his heart, his sense of justice that people who are poor and immigrants needed a better break and he could help them get it. You know, every organization should have someone like Keith, a superhero. Someone has the intuition, the experience, and the willingness to challenge an organization. And that's what Keith is to us. He constantly is introducing us to new people, often powerful people in the community, to urge them to get involved as he is. So when he sees a challenge in the county, he says, there's a whole host of organizations that could impact this. Let me see how we bring them together and we can really be problem solvers in addition to providing some of the capital to make that happen. What's so impressive to me about Keith is that he took personal tragedy and turned it into passionate action for the greater good. And he continues to do that day in, day out with us as well as with other organizations and the world's a better place for it. Keith, it's an honor to work with you. Congratulations on this most deserved recognition. Keith, on behalf of every child and family that we've served, and more importantly, on behalf of every child and family that we will serve because of your support, we want to thank you and congratulate you on this great honor. Keith, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all you've done for uh, OC Human Relations and for our community, and congratulations on this great honor. Keith, on behalf of all the faculty and staff at UCI Mind, Congratulations on a well-deserved honor, and thank you for everything you do in the mission to end Alzheimer's disease through research. I cannot imagine anyone better embodying outstanding philanthropy than you. Congratulations on this well-deserved honor. And it is my true honor right now to be able to uh, introduce this very important and wonderful man, Keith Swain. I promised myself that I wouldn't lose my composure, but when I heard all those kind words, it's hard not to. Um, I really am honored to be here and receiving this award. First of all, though, I'd like to recognize all of the honorees and the nominees and congratulate them for the good work they do in the county. And of course, I want to thank the organizations that nominated me. I uh, hold you in the highest regard and have a, the greatest respect for the work you do in the community. And of course, I want to thank the judges who saw fit to select me from among the nominees. Twenty years ago, my wife, Judy, received an award on National Philanthropy Day for founding the Orange County Community Foundation. Judy passed away five years ago after a long battle with Alzheimer's. But her impact on the county continues till this day. And I'm sure there are people in the room that were inspired by her, and certainly I was inspired by her. If she were here today, she'd be smiling and pleased to be in this company of so many people doing good. She would also whisper to me, don't let these accolades go to your head. <laughs> I've had a good life and a lot of good fortune, but I haven't forgotten my roots. I grew up in uh, working class neighborhoods in Santa Ana. I'm the first in my family to graduate from high school. My parents came from poor families and went to work at an early age. My mother was part of an immigrant family. In contrast, I had the opportunity to go to college, to graduate school. I served as an officer in the Navy in Vietnam. And following that, uh, I had a successful business career. All those things together brought me to this point in my life. I'm committed to doing what I can to help others have an opportunity for a fulfilling life. By working with organizations that are striving to make Orange County inclusive for all who live here, regardless of race, religion, ethnicity, or legal status.
and to do what I can to help remove the obstacles that life places in front of so many people and to address injustice and inequity in our communities and to give a voice to those who often find themselves on the margins or in the shadows. And finally, I'm committing myself to do all that I can to help accelerate research to find a cure or intervention for Alzheimer's and to be a support and a resource for those families dealing with that disease. Everyone in this room knows there's no shortage of issues and challenges in our community to address. We can choose to stand by and be observers or we can choose to engage and try to make things better. It's an honor for me to be in this room with so many people who have chosen to engage and are making a difference. Receiving this award in your company is a special moment in my life, and I thank you all. Thank you very much. have one more beautiful handmade uh, award up there, but I did want to acknowledge the artist is, is pretty spectacular to make these wonderful awards for us. So, And uh, Keith, that was incredibly moving and something I will remember for a long time. Okay. Well, are you ready to sing? I don't know if they're going to sing again, but it certainly was, as we mentioned earlier in the day, one of the highlights of uh, National Philanthropy Day at large. But it is my sincere pleasure and sheer joy to introduce Charlie and Ling Zhang, honored with the Outstanding Philanthropist Award in 2018, who will present this year's Legacy Award. Award is recognized an outstanding individual family or family foundation with a history of exceptional financial generosity and the volunteer leadership who has influenced, supported, and directed philanthropies in the Orange County nonprofit organization whose philosophy's footprint in the community has been ex <laughs> You know, this is kind of funny, I just going to put I have a so, so hard time to pronounce this word. And Charlie's been repeated, repeated so many times on my ear. Extraordinary. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I just learned the philosophy's words the last time, so this is kind of very difficult for me. But anyway, over time, and who collectively and individually represents a memorable and the lasting philosophy's idea. Please turn the your attention to the screen and see the video. Thank you. Ralph and Sue have been such an integral part of the philanthropy of Orange County and the greater community for so many decades. The reason that UCI brought forward Ralph and Sue Stern is because of their long history in donating to causes at UCI. Sue and Ralph Stern have been a long time supporters of Girls Inc. They have not only invested in our programming, but in the future of girls in Orange County. 
Ralph and Sue have been consistently supporters of the foundation. Ralph has served on the board for over 30 years. Sue has been an involved member of Girls Inc. for almost 25 years. Her journey started as a volunteer working at one of our high school sites. Sue continues to be involved on our board of directors. The Stern Center is the central apparatus through which we conduct the very latest cancer clinical trials at the Chow Family Comprehensive Cancer Center. With their support, our clinical trials office is number one in the entire UC system for data timeliness and quality, and number one for the time to activation of a new clinical trial. These are both amazing accomplishments that would not have been possible without their generous gift. Ralph and Sue have been financial supporters of our Endowment Book of Life and created Jewish legacy programs. Those programs, through their support and the help of others, they have increased our assets by more than 32 million just in the last six years. Sue and Ralph Stern really stepped up and made that commitment to ensure that we could provide programs that helped girls find their voice through their investment, we've not only seen girls become national scholar recipients, but they've also gone off to pursue higher education in local colleges as well as colleges abroad. They are just so passionate about their philanthropy and about making an impact on a variety of people throughout the entire community and, and so many different nonprofits. Not only have Sue and Ralph been committed members of Girls Inc. for many years, but their care and concern for the Orange County community transcends beyond Girls Inc. to the entire community and for that we're forever grateful. Ralph and Sue, on behalf of the Child Family Comprehensive Cancer Center and the Stern Center for Cancer Clinical Trials and Research, we want to offer you our heartfelt congratulations for winning this award. On behalf of Girls Incorporated of Orange County, we are so proud to have Sue and Ralph Stern be the recipients of this Legacy Award and for being true champions for girls. Mazel tov, Ralph and Sue. This is such an incredibly well-deserved honor. I am so thrilled to be part of it and to celebrate you today. Thank you for all that you do for the Jewish community and the greater community of Orange County and around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, here to accept this year's Legacy Award are Sue and Ralph. Please welcome to the stage. Thank you for that very flattering video. As they say, flattery will get you everything. <laughs> Our thanks to Girls Incorporated, the JCC, and UCI Health for nominating us for this very dis uh, distinguished award. We are humbled and honored to be amongst this group of people and congratulate all the honorees, past honorees, and thank everyone in this room because by being here shows that you all care to make this place a better world. I've always been inspired by the precept, he who saves a single life, it's, it is as if, he ensaved, as if he saved the entire world. I learned that from working with disadvantaged children they are starving for mentors and role models. With the investment of relatively little time, one can have a huge influence on one or many of their lives. That motivated me to get involved in children's charities such as Girls Incorporated. Girls Inc. has found a special place in my heart. Every day, I feel the impact that our programs have on each girl who is fortunate enough to be a participant in one or more of our Girls Inc. programs. Starting at a young age, these programs teach girls to be str become strong, smart, and bold. They empower them to move on to higher education. These are life-changing skills for these girls 
that enable them to become productive members of our communities and eventually they too give back. We feel blessed to be able to play a part in their lives. For us, the pleasure is in the giving. Thank you all for being here and thank our family and friends. We really appreciate your support and are extremely honored. That's a tough act to follow. And I'm not sure I want to, so let's go. <laughs> a friend once shared with me that he wonders why God allows poverty, suffering, and injustice. I suggested he ask God. My friend answered, I'm afraid you'll ask me the same question. This conversation made me realize to not depend on others when it comes to tikkun olam, making the world a better place, but rather to rely on the person in the mirror. So mirror, mirror on the wall, tell me who's the best charity of them all. My answer is that the charity with the best, or rather the charity with excellent and passionate leadership. As we thank the three organizations that nominated us, UCI Health, the JCC of Orange County, and Girls Inc., it might not be obvious, but they all have in common one important characteristic, and that is strong leadership. Just as people in real estate talk about Location, location, location. When it comes to nonprofit organization, it's leadership, leadership, leadership. Outstanding leaders of these three organizations are Dr. Steve Goldstein, Dr. Rick Van Etten, Dr. Michael Stamus, Irv Chase, Dan Bernstein, Scott Braswell, Janet Michaels, and Lucy Santana all great leaders. Sue and I are honored and humbled to receive this Legacy Award. You all know that awards are firstly to acknowledge acts of the past, but also secondly, it's for the recipients to move on and make room for others. So like the sun, we too will disappear in the sunset. And like the sun, we hope to reappear. Thank you very much. Well, let's bring back to the stage our wonderful co-chairs of this terrific event. I was fixing to read Ralph's speech again. It was so good, it was worthy of being repeated, but I think I'll get my script. At this point in time, I get to um, thank our wonderful mistress of ceremonies. We know why she's that good, because she's like this producer, so we're gonna give you that job next year, Maria, wherever you are. Uh, Mitch and Catherine, you're gonna lose your job for next year, Maria's taking over. Um, but we, she's been like a staple at this event, and she's always so poised and doesn't fall down, and doesn't, you know, do things you're not supposed to do in front of 800 people. So it's why I'm not on TV, I guess. Um, but we have a very small token of appreciation. She only does this for the gift. Oh, you have it. <laughs> <It's>, but, 
Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. On behalf of everyone in this room, we'd like to thank again these exceptional individuals and organizations that we've honored today. We extend both our gratefulness, our deep appreciation, and our enduring respect for the many contributions you have made that have changed the lives of Orange County. We had said earlier that the Orange County Register had been a long time supporter of this event. Um, and true to their continued support, if you will look in your Sunday, November 17th uh, paper, they have um, a, a full page of recognition and honoring not only our sponsors, but all of our National Philanthropy, Philanthropy Day. Uh, Ling, that's my word. I have a hard time with philanthropy. You, that's what you are, and extraordinary. So uh, I just I just have a tough time with that word. Tough occupation to be in, huh? Um, so, so I just would like to really uh, thank the Orange County Register, and you look forward to seeing that ad in the Sunday paper. I want to thank them. And since you're applauding, we're just going to keep on uh, because I would like to once again uh, acknowledge the um, uh, outstanding, uh, no, that's not it, Jeannie, our honorary chairs, Vicki Booth, Jenny Uberoth of the Uberoth Family Foundation. Once again, they're so humble. They didn't really want this. Do we have to do this? Thank you for doing this. You were awesome. Uh, so thank you to our honorary chairs. V Vicky's not taking my calls anymore. So uh, our youth, outstanding youth, Hannah Novakovich, we would like to acknowledge her and thank her. Our Junior League of Orange County, I think I'm too old, but I would like to be in the Junior League. Do you take like old people or? Do you have a senior league, is what I want to know. I play pickleball, and I'm going to play in the senior tour for pickleball. I could be in senior junior league, right? They don't pay me for this, so you're getting what you get. Um, I mean, what can I say? Oh, thank you, Mother. That was very sweet of <laughs> No, I'm just thank you. Um, uh, our... Um, Corporate uh, awardee Aprium Advisors, thank you so much for all that you do. Dr. Adrian Matros, Matros, I'm sorry I said that wrong. Matros. Adrian, you know who you are. Thank you for doing all that you do. Yay! She's got a big fan club here today. The Balboa Bay Resort and Balboa Bay Club. Uh, I, that's hard to say. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> Carol and Devin. Clark Construction. <laughs> Carlos, you are doing amazing things. Thank you for being such a great partner in Orange County. Okay, I gotta tell you this. I don't cook. So this man has my heart, Bill Bracken. I would go and watch him in the in his truck or whatever it's called. Um, and lastly, the, um, Keith Swain, who one of the joys of doing this um, position of having the co-lead job is that you really get to meet some pretty amazing people um, and you get to hear their stories. And um, Keith, uh, I have Alzheimer's in my family, hopefully not me today. Uh, I will remember the rest of this, um, but Keith, the, your efforts on behalf of the Alzheimer's Association and those individuals fighting a really tough life battle, um, my heart goes out to you and the work that you do for them, so thank you. And then lastly, and lastly, uh, Sue and Ralph Stern, uh, I had 
multiple conversations with them, and I number one, I love Sue's glasses. She didn't wear them today, but they are just to die for, and I'm gonna run out and buy some just like them, or I'll borrow yours, Sue. Such role models of being humble givers and such gracious people. Um, and I know that all of your friends and family that are here today are feeling the same way all of us are feeling, and that is absolutely thankful that you are not gone out of the sunset, but that you are here in the full light. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. So lastly, we want to thank SYL Design Studio for the gorgeous table arrangements. So we invite you at your table to determine who has the most recent birthday. And if that's you, you are the recipient of this beautiful floral arrangement. And then for tables with multiple arrangements, Select the people, select the three most recent birthdays. Thank you. I, it's a very exciting activity, I know. So congratulations to those winners. I will accept my award on behalf of my birthday because my table just told me I won. Woohoo! Um, <laughs> thank you very much, Table 5. Um, I do want to say a little something about the florist. Um, Lily Song attended last year and she was here with Charlie and Ling Zhang and she gave me her card uh, or I asked for her card because I heard she was uh, she did beautiful things for Pacific Symphony and some other uh, arts organizations and I called her and I told her what we paid for flowers and she did it anyway so I want to thank Lily <laughs> She was awesome and stepped up to the plate, so I really do appreciate her doing for us what she's done. Um, so I'm going, I've just been told here that I have to wrap it up. So <laughs> I'm gonna wrap it up. I wanna thank all of you uh, for being here today. For those nominators, thank you for nominating. For the honorees, thank you for attending. And for our outstanding honorees, thank you for doing what you do best. Um, and that's changing lives. Um, and then remember, November, 19th. no, oh, I'm gonna let you say that. November 19th, the 35th National uh, Philanthropy Day. I didn't think I talked too much, did you? Okay, gotta go. All right, thank you for joining us. Thank you, have a nice trip back.